Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Welcome to the BMC, the Burns Memorial Church. Amen. Come on in, come on in. Those that, you know, are really supporting us, share our video on your page so we can reach more people. I just want to welcome you all this morning. It's Sunday morning and we are here, ready to preach the word of God. And you know, I always like to start off with one of them old songs. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to start playing some music for you all. You know, because some people are complaining about my singing. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to get my singing on. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Blind, oppressed, afflicted, sick or lame. For the Spirit of the Lord is still the same. You won't leave here like you came. I won't leave here like I came. We won't leave here like we came in Jesus' name. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name. We lift you up, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. Lord, we ask that you come on in this morning, Lord. Come on in and send a word, a word that would not return void, but a word that will do what you have purposed it to do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I want to go into a series. You know, it's a subject that I love to talk about, faith. In the Bible, it talks about Enoch was so faithful, full of faith, that he walked with God till he was no more. And you see how the faith of the Hebrew, three Hebrew boys, got them through the fiery furnace, and Daniel through the lion's den, and Moses through the Red Sea, and this faith, I love that subject. Today I want to talk about the anatomy of faith. I'm going to start out with the anatomy of faith. So I want to go... Matthew 17 and 12. Let's go Matthew 8 and 26 first. And it reads, And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And then I want to go over to Matthew 17 and 20. And it reads, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place. Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Read that first part. Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. And let's go to one more, Matthews 11. 11 and 12. We'll read all the scriptures and we're going to start breaking this faith down. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. So, let's deal with that. The anatomy of faith. What do I mean by the anatomy of faith? Well, basically, what is the anatomy? You know, the breakdown of the body. You know, we usually use that word anatomy for the breakdown of the body. So, I want to break faith down because it seems like people are an or of, you know, people that are operating in faith and kind of put them on superstar status. I had somebody, you know, tell me about my situation and the fight that I'm in. And they was like, man, you're, you're, you're special. You, you, you know, they don't make them like you no more. That's what they were saying to me. And I thought about that and I was like, no. Jesus said that God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. So everyone, when God breathed into you the breath of life, you were given a measure of faith. So we all basically start out 
You know, and, I, and, I, and God's not no respect of person, so I'm on, on the assumption that everyone is given the same measure. Okay? Because I don't think it would be fair if God gave one more than others. But why do people, some people, do more with their faith? Why do some people accomplish more with their faith and others don't? You know, it, so it got me to thinking about, you know, the anatomy of faith and maybe helping somebody take what they've been given and do with it. Y'all remember the talents? God gave out one talent to one, two talents to another, and five talents to another, or in another scripture, it was a different number. But when he came back, God expected something for what he had given you. And I believe that God is expecting what that measure of faith that he's put in you for your life to have accomplished something here on this earth. A lot of us are getting through life and never accomplishing anything with our faith. In fact, we're letting fear overwhelm us so much, it takes us to the grave. It, 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 it's, it's taking us down. It's, we're crumbling under that operation and don't even realize what we have in us will annihilate what's outside of us, which is that fear. So here's one point, and those that are taking notes, write it down. Real faith requires you to be present. Okay? Real faith requires you to be present. What do I mean by that? A lot of us, we, we, we sit there and we're in another place. Our mind is someplace else. We're not engaging what's there. And let me, let me tell you what I mean by that, because... Can you imagine, uh, you know, being in war, those that are veterans, being in war, but you're thinking about home while the bullets are flying and the enemy is advancing. Can you imagine what would happen to you if you didn't st keep your mind in the game? You know, keep, when I, I, you know, I ran track and I, I was, you know, considered pretty good at it at one point in my life. And I was a long distance runner. And I stay, the pain would be unbearable when you're running through the mountains and going over the hills and running 3.1 courses, you know, in Van Cortland Park up in the Bronx there. You know, you'd be in grueling pain, and a lot of people would like to zone out. But I would keep my mind engaged because I would see, I would pick people that, I, you know, that were in front of me as I advanced. And I'd be like, all right, another one bites the dust. No one by stuff. I would stay engaged and people would wonder why I would be so good because I would strategize the whole way. But a lot of us in life, we, we go into an imaginary world and won't deal with the circumstances and the, and the reality of the stuff that's coming at us. We, we smoke so much weed so we can escape because we don't want to deal with it. And we hope after a high come down, that something, you know, that the problem would have went away. Or we drink so much alcohol so that we, we, we will dead everything. We won't deal with the pain. But I, I remember I saw this movie, and in the movie, he said, pain is good. Pain is good. And I thought about that. Pain is good because pain will keep you engaged. Do you understand? It will keep you aware. Because there are some people that don't can't feel anything. Their nerves are messed up and they can't feel nothing. You know how easy it is for them to burn their hand on the stove? Or, or even get their hand cut off and don't even realize it? Pain will keep you engaged. It will keep you cautious. It will keep you aware. But we're so busy trying to run away from pain. Run away from life. And don't even realize that what God has given us can annihilate every single situation in life and advance you through. Paul said, I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Paul said, recognized that it's always a press, but he didn't say, I retreat. He said, I press. In other words, I go forward. I keep on going. Do you understand? Real faith requires you to be present, people, Present in the moment. 
Don't we have an imagination? We can escape. But when you are trying to do what God has called you to do, when you're trying to advance, you have to be present. So I, I want that point number one. Now, remember I read the scripture, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence taken by force. First of all, we as people of God, we are in the kingdom. We're in his kingdom. We were put on earth to colonize this earth for heaven. Okay? So those that are people of faith are kingdom dwelling operating people. So it says that we, people of faith, suffer violence. Right? And then the violent take it by force. So one key, and I want you to get this, all right, to operating in your faith and moving in your faith you have to suffer violence. So then we have to get used to the fact that the enemy is constantly going to come at us. Going to come at us through people, through haters, through talking about us, through attacking even our finances, the economy. Like right now with this pandemic, our finances are being attacked, right? Well, what if you are a true man and woman of faith, what it does when that when that happens, something kicks in. And then the violent faith, you got to understand something. The violent take it by force. What takes it by force? That faith that was put in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So the violent take it by force. Do you get that? So then when I suffer violence as a kingdom dweller, an operator, it, something kicks in and that violent spirit in me, which is more violent than what I'm suffering, which is faith, takes it by force, destroys the enemy, overcomes. Jesus said, behold, I have overcome the world. Do you saw the violence that was put on Jesus Christ when he was in the flesh here on earth? He died on the cross. He was beat. He was talked about all of that. And then in the end, he was victorious. He got up. He said, and then I, I've overcome the world. All power has been given to me in heaven and earth. See, the enemy doesn't understand this is why he attacks us. Otherwise, he wouldn't attack us. He don't understand that when you attack somebody that is operating in, in faith, all you're doing is kicking what's in them into gear. That's why, you know, I, I used to fight a lot growing up in school because of the neighborhoods I lived in and everything. And one time the teacher told my mother, he loves to fight. He, he loves it. I saw him smiling while he was fighting. I had got jumped. And at first they was knocking me around. But then I went into a zone after I took so many hits till I wasn't feeling pain no more. And I get that little smirk on my face and you in trouble then. Because now I'm fighting and I'm fighting with and not feeling nothing. I'm coming at you violently. It would what would happen, and I remember, it would kick something in me, would kick in after I've taken enough punches. I was like, I ain't taking this no more. You giving me your best and you didn't knock me out? You didn't kill me? So all that's doing is gonna make me. Now I realize you can't kill me. Now I'm gonna show you what I got. Cause it, what's the difference? I'm taking pain and I don't hit back and I get beat up. Or I take the pain and I hit back and I just might annihilate you. Do, do you see what I'm saying? What's in you gets activated. The violent that comes towards you is supposed to cause what's in you to, be, to become violent and to activate the strength, which is my next point. Faith has a strength level. Do you hear what I'm saying? When Jesus said, O oh, ye of little faith, people always use that as he was putting the disciples down on the boat. He wasn't. When you really look at that scripture, he said, O oh, ye of little faith, and then he rebuked the, rain, the winds and the rain. He literally was like telling them that was all the faith you needed. All you had to do is what I do right now. All you had to do is rebuke. Tell the devil to back up. Because 
All it took was little faith. He was just letting them know that that's all that's needed to do what needed to be done. But little faith, do you know, and you know I, where I get this from? The Bible says, if you have faith, we read the scripture, the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain. A lot of people say, oh, it's because the mustard seed grows and it covers a whole lot. And, and so he's saying that, you know, that's great faith. No, no, no. Jesus was letting you know that it only takes a little bit. It only takes what you've been given. All right? It only takes that. But here's the thing. It takes you using it. It has to be utilized strategically, wisely. And what, what it is, is like the mustard plant grows, right? That little faith has a strength monitor on it. Do you see what I'm saying? And God never, how, how should I say? It, it never used more than is needed. It never gets wasted. So whatever is coming after it will pull it to the level. Because the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. Okay? So the enemy comes in and then the stand is lifted up. In other words, the assault comes in and then a bigger assault comes back because the strength level of your faith is activated to the point. But you have to let it go. Let it go. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to talk about something else. Faith. People don't realize this. They're always like, oh, I'm tired of being scared. Huh. There's so many things that make me fearful, right? But faith actually grows in the atmosphere of fear. Do you, I want you all to get this point. All right? We're going to be on a series and we're going to be breaking this down. Faith grows in the atmosphere of fear. So we always try to move the things, get to a place where we don't fear. Where we don't fear. But let me tell you something, people that admire me for my faith and my tenacity, you know, for that know the things that I'm fighting and I'm going through and standing, right? Y'all don't even realize I stay scared all the time. I do. But what it does to me, I get so angry that it's making me fearful that I kick in with my faith and I start fighting back. I tell the devil he's a liar. I shall live and not die. I'm going forward and not back. Thousand may fall on my left, ten times my right, won't come nigh me. I keep confessing with my mouth and I attack the enemy back worse than he's coming at me. That's the way I get through because it, it, it makes me violent. It makes me angry. You know, if you make me scared, that's the worst thing you can do to me. I do not like feeling that feeling. I do not like being fearful. I was the wrong person for you to tell at 3 o'clock, I'm going to beat you up. When we was in school, they would say, 3 o'clock, I'm going to beat you up. Wrong person to tell that to. They would have to jump me to stop me when you came at me. Because I hated feeling scared. Do you understand? But it is needful. Jesus said these things need be. When the enemy attacks you. Because it will bring out. Your faith has to be proven. Your faith has to be tried. Do you understand? Your faith has to be activated in an atmosphere of nothing going on. Fear, faith actually dies, diminish. People say, oh man, I just want peace. I want no drama. Just want some peace. And I sit up there, they're always seeking peace, which says to me that you're always seeking a place of not operation of what you truly are if you're a child of God. You're always seeking to be outside of your reality. You want what you call normalcy when you don't understand. People of faith are always going to attract drama. I want y'all to get that so you can be comfortable and, and just relax in the, in the drama. If you are somebody of faith, you are an enemy of the state. <laughs> You're an enemy of the devil. He's coming after. 
Because he can't stand to see faith in operation. You understand? Like somebody said, I see the God in you. I see the faith in you. The enemy will see that and he will attack it. He's attracted to faith because he doesn't have it. Do you understand? God gave us something that was never given to the angels. Do you understand? That measure of faith conquers the world. He gave man dominion over this earth. Why do you think Satan came to try to take the dominion? He's envious. So he's going to attack that dominion power that you have. I hope I'm teaching somebody something. All right? You'll give me a few more minutes to just get this part of my series out. All right? So faith grows in the atmosphere of fear. Fear helps us to recognize at what level our faith is at. Do you understand? If the slightest little thing can mow you over, you know your, your, your faith is not where it should be. You know it's not in the position it should be in. The Bible said guard your heart, right? And you don't even realize the only way to guard your heart is through the covering of faith. Holding up the shield of faith, the whole arm of God. Do you understand? That shield guards the heart, the, the breast, the, the vital organs. That shield. You understand? They say the breastplate of righteousness is over there. But what why why does it still need a shield if the breastplate is 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 all that's needed? People say, I'm saved, and that's all we need. I'm saved. As long as I'm going to go to heaven. No. How do we operate on this earth and survive and, and get ahead if just being saved is enough? It, God wouldn't require us to have the shield of faith. We wouldn't have to put that shield out there. Do you see what I'm saying? We wouldn't have to hold it up. It's to stop the darts, the fiery arrows of the enemy. He's coming after you. But that shield of faith stops it. Do you understand? Oh, I hope somebody get this. I hope somebody get this. So, faith is lost in complacency, people. If you are operating under spirit of complacency, just trying to let time go by, just trying to get by, all right, your faith is lost. And the, and the only way the Bible tells you how to please God, you're not pleasing God when you're not operating in faith. You're not pleasing Him. So you say, well, as long as I'm saying, that's enough. It's not enough because you have to please God. And the only way to please him is to operate in faith. If you're living your life operating under your own strength and all that, it is not pleasing to God. And in the end, you're going to regret it. Even if you make it to the kingdom, the Bible talks about rewards in heaven. Make it to heaven. The Bible talks about rewards in heaven. So you're going to regret not pleasing God, not operating in faith. So while we can, let's use what God has given us. Let's, let's go forth and conquer. Okay? Now we're talking about the anatomy of faith. All right? So the faith gets activated from violence. Right? And what is violence? All right? You remember Ziglag? You remember when David lost you know, came back and his men and they lost everything and they wanted to stone David. Those men, instead of kicking in to their faith, gave in to the circumstance and they wanted to kill the man of faith because they, 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 they began to feel hopeless. That's what the devil wants to do. He attacks you. He steals. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his job. That's what he does. That's the violence that comes up against you. The stealing of your stuff, the killing of your stuff, and the destroying of your stuff. Okay? So then, in that story with Ziglag and David, remember what he did. The Bible said he encouraged himself in the Lord. In other words, he let his faith kick in and his faith began to talk to him. He asked the Lord, shall I recover? And the God said, you'll recover all, right? He heard that only because he put on the ears of faith to hear what God was telling him. 
Preaching good. But the people, they were hearing, woe is me. They was letting fear speak. Know that fear has a voice and faith has a voice. They're both real spirits. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it depends on what voice you're going to listen to. You have the faith in you if you will listen. That still small voice will tell you in the midst of the worst situations that I, and I've been in. It'll say, go on. You can do it. You can do it. I remember when, when I was back on the West Coast and, and my grandfather died and, and it was no way for me to, people were just going to take everything. You understand? That my family had built. And, and I was like, I have nothing I can do about it. I'm stuck here in a situation. Woe is me. And something says, listen, I don't care if the odds are against you. I don't care if you don't have the legal money to fight this. You go on to New York and you put your first foot forward and you just go ahead and fight. And I've been fighting for the last three years and gaining and gaining and gaining and have not lost anything of my family's. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, money has been taken, but the money can be recovered very easily. But none of the property has been taken. You know, none, none of the land. You understand? And God has been advancing it and giving me possession. You understand? And, and the thing is, I didn't have anything but faith. I heard the still small voice said, go. Just go. We'll work it out as it comes. And the enemy attacked me so many times. I even got arrested preaching in the building. Just preaching a sermon. They put the cuffs on me. Because the other, the, you know, the family I'm fighting turned around and said they own it. And the police wanted to believe them. And it took me to jail. You understand? And all of that, I can give you so many stories. But let me tell you something. All it did was make me more and more violent with my faith. I believe in God even more. I done took this. You embarrassed me in front of the community, putting the cuffs on me. Oh, well, you done did your worst. I'm coming back. I'm still going to fight. You're not going to discourage me. That's the attitude that you got to take. You got to take that attitude. You got to fight. You got to let that faith kick in. You got to go forth. Hey, hey, listen, there's no cowards in this in this walk. Ain't no cowards in this walk. You also the wizard of Oz, the, the cowardly lion, he looking for some courage. And the whole time it was in him. It just took the circumstances to bring it out of him. Come on. I know that's not a biblical thing, but whoever wrote it probably had, had, was in that mindset. The violence that came up against the cowardly lion made him fight back. The love that he had for Dorothy and, 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 and Toto, you know, made him fight. And then he realized, I had courage all along. I'm really not a coward. People of God, I'm going to stop there because I want you to come on back Thursday. We, we're getting into this, this faith thing, this anatomy of faith thing. Thursday at a, a, what, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, live, God willing, we'll be still speaking on the anatomy, all right? If you do not know the Lord in the palm of your sin, the Bible said the word is not thee, even in your mouth, that if you confess Jesus, believe in your heart that he is. And that he died for your sins and rose again for your justification, you are saved. Believe right now. Receive your salvation. And then ask the Lord to fill you with his spirit. Amen. So you can walk in that power. And it can help to lead your faith into the right places. And to believe on the right things. Amen. So God bless y'all. Let me tell you something. I just want to thank God. Because, you know, we, 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 you know, we ask for the donations. We do that. And I ask for two reasons. One, because I'm supposed to, for the kingdom of heaven, all right? And, and number two is for you. The Bible said, give and it shall be given. You want to advance. We play, I'm in the stock market myself now, and, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm invested in, in, in real estate. I have a few pieces, and, you know, and God is blessing, and I got investments and stuff. But I believe that my blessings come because I give. I give to the kingdom. I give to God's cause. All right? So don't shirk your responsibility from giving. I'm not doing this for you to make me rich because God, y'all can't stop me from getting rich because as I keep on going forth in things of God, God is going to keep on blessing me from the northeast, west, and south. 
and you can have the same blessings because I'm a giver, okay? But somebody gave before I even started preaching, all right? I don't know if you want me to give his name, but God bless you, man of God. Well, I'm going to give you a name, and I hope you forgive me. Well, no, I'm not going to give you a name because you might not want me to, all right? But God bless you, man of God. He gave even before I started preaching. And, and that type of commitment, you know that man is going to be blessed. You know he's going to be blessed. Amen? So consider giving. Consider sowing. Our cash app is there. And if anybody needs another way to sow and they don't know how to operate with cash app, the, hit, 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 hit me up, all right? And I'll tell you how to sell it. I'll tell you how to do any other way, all right? I got some people actually drive by here and give their tithes and offering. They come by the church parsonage and they give their tithes and offering. Amen? They said, you know, they said they don't really know how to do all that cash app and stuff. And they're in the community and they follow me online and I'm their online pastor. And they actually drop by. So you can do that too. If you need their address, you know, come on by. Drop it in the mailbox. You know, with that corona, you know, we ain't letting everybody up. <laughs> you know, amen? All right, God bless y'all. I love y'all. Share it to your page. If you can't give, another way you can give is by sharing it to your page and other people get this word. Okay? So consider that too. All right? God bless y'all. And good day. Good evening. Good morning.